In this episode, we're going to build a drag and drop file upload feature that uploads the file to Firebase storage. There's already several file upload packages for Angular 4 and Angular 2, such as DropZone.js and others, but none of them tie in easily with Firebase storage, and it's relatively straightforward to do the entire thing from scratch, which I'll show you how to do in this lesson. Let's get started by building the service. I have another lesson that goes through Firebase file uploads in more detail, so for now I'm just going to run through the bare minimum code that's needed to get Angular working with Firebase storage. First, we define an upload class that models the data we want to send to the database. In this example, we build the object by sending it a JavaScript file object to the constructor. In the upload service, we import this class as well as the Angular Fire 2 package. And we also need to import the entire Firebase SDK because file uploads aren't supported at this point by the Angular Fire 2 package. Now we create a function to handle the upload task. It's going to use the Firebase API to create a promise, which we can use to monitor the status of the upload itself. When the upload task is complete, it'll save some information about the file to the real-time database. Most importantly, the download URL, which we can use to access the file. Now we can start building the attribute directive. In this case, we go with an attribute directive over a component because the functionality itself doesn't need an actual HTML template. Inside the directive, we're gonna use event emitter, host listener, and output. We use a combination of output and event emitter to create our own custom events that we can send to other components in the app. In this case, we create a files dropped event, which will send a JavaScript file list object to a parent component. The file list is just the raw files that the user had dropped into the element. We can use host listener to tie into regular JavaScript events. In this case, we're interested in listening to the drop event, which will occur anytime a user drops files onto the host element. It's important that we tell the event to prevent the default behavior, because otherwise it's going to try to redirect to the local URL of that file. The event has a data transfer attribute that we can use to obtain the file list. Once we have this file list in a variable, we can just emit it through our event emitter. Now, we also want to create a separate custom event that will tell us whether or not the user is hovering files over the file upload zone. We need this information because we want to add a different CSS class whenever the user has files hovered over the element. So we'll start by adding two more host listeners for the drag leave and the drag enter events. And on the drag enter event, you also want to prevent the default behavior. A separate custom event called files hovered is created, which will just emit a Boolean value, true or false, whenever the user is hovering files over the element. Now that we have the directive emitting the files, we need to have the parent component listen for those events and then handle the file uploads with the service. We're using Lodash to help loop over files with less JavaScript. Our function simply loops over the file list, and for each file in that list, it will trigger the upload in the service to send that file to Firebase storage. We also declare a separate variable and function to keep track of whether or not files are hovered over the drop zone at any given point. In the template, we start by adding a basic progress bar, which was covered in more detail in my first file upload video. Then we add the attribute directive to a div. From there, we can listen to the custom events that we define in the directive. And when those events occur, we trigger the functions that were defined in the component. So in this case, when the user drops files onto the directive, it's going to trigger that handle upload function, and that's gonna 
sequentially upload those files to Firebase Storage. When the files hovered event occurs, we just toggle that Boolean variable, and then we can use the ng-class directive to display a conditional class whenever the files are hovered. In this case, the div just turns from a dashed border to a solid bright blue border. That covers the basics of drag and drop file uploads. Some other things you might consider are limiting the file size. For example, throwing an error if the user tries to upload a really large file or limiting the file uploads to only certain types. For example, if you only wanted to have images uploaded to your app. That's it for this episode. If you found the video helpful, please like and subscribe. And if you want to support the channel, consider becoming a pro subscriber at angularfirebase.com. For just a few bucks a month, you'll get access to exclusive content as well as free one-on-one -on -one project consulting. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.